Gina, come up here. Because Gina's going to re- uh, share a dream God gave her. And I, I wasn't going to do this, but when Chuck leaned over to me to the worship, I'm always in these meetings saying, what are you hearing, Chuck? Just come right on up, Gina. And I'll, uh, what are you hearing? I'm just always checking in. We're checking in with each other. We don't really talk about these meetings before we get here. We just sort of try to tune in separately. I said, what are you hearing? He said, I'm hearing Geyser. Uh-huh. You know, prophets are strange. <laughs> I'm thinking chapter, verse, Shondai, you know, Geyser. <laughs> Sealed Geyser. <laughs> we got to get the seal off. <laughs> well, I ran with him enough to know sort of what he means when he does things like that. <laughs> but seriously, Gina just sent me this, this dream two, three, four weeks ago. I don't know how long it's been, but not long. About a geyser. And ultimately, by the end of the dream, it moves to synergy, the synergy of the age, the synergy of revivals, that there's about to be this anointing released, this outpouring released. This is not not just going to be Azusa again. It's going to be the merging of outpourings, plural. It's going to be a multiplication, a, multipl- a multiplication wow. of revival anointings. Yes. So, Gina, just go ahead, and, and if you feel like you need to stop a time or two and explain, go ahead. I know that th- this is like a, this is not a two-minute thing. This is a probably a five to ten-minute thing, but just do as best you can to. So I had this dream uh, back on January the 14th, and I dreamed that I was on the grounds of the Red River Meeting House. If you're not familiar with that, a lot of people say this is where the Second Great Awakening actually began in the United States of America. It's actually in our region where we come from. And I dreamed that I was standing on the grounds of this Red River Meeting House in Russellville, Kentucky. And I had gone through the gate and I'd started up the drive toward the little structure that is there even today. And I got, there's a little dip right before you go up to the meeting house. And I got right in that dip and I noticed out in front of me on the ground were standing uh, about 100 bald eagles. That's amazing. And they were just standing there. And and bald eagles, God uses that a lot of times to speak to me prophetically. So this really captured my attention in the dream. And I was just captivated by what I was seeing. And I all of a sudden, I heard a noise behind me. And I turned around to look. And there's another gate, a larger gate there. And coming through that larger gate was one of those old oil drilling rigs Um, and it was coming up right toward me and it got almost to where I was and it backed in with the bit end of the truck facing the little Red River meeting house there and when they backed in toward there the people in the truck got out and they lowered the bit and no sooner had the bit touched the ground that a massive geyser began to spring forth huge massive geyser and in the dream I thought this looks like old faithful and I have seen old faithful before and so this really reminded me of that in the dream but this was much much larger than that and in the dream I was thinking about how old faithful is very predictable and that it comes forth it gushes almost in a rhythm of time And when I thought that in the dream, when that thought went through my mind, there was an audible voice that came in the dream speaking about this geyser that I was seeing gushing forth in front of me. And the voice said this, it is set on the rhythm of heaven's time clock. And it's time. 
And in the dream, I understood that to mean this. It has blown before a gushing move of the Spirit of God, but it is set for another greater gusher, and it's time. It's time. The next thing I saw in the dream, I saw two hands come down and they clapped very loudly. And that clap was like a signal to those eagles that were still standing there being drenched with that water. And when the eagles heard that clap, they rose up just hovering. They didn't fly away. They just rose up kind of hovering in a circle there over that little meeting house. They weren't scared or uh, anything by the noise or by the water. They just simultaneously rose up, calmly hovering over the place. And when they started rising up, I saw that each eagle had in one of their talons some arrows. I believe that that is significant of the promise of God, the promises that God has given to us that are promises with authority. And in their other talent, they had a rolled up piece of paper. And I'd had another dream where eagles were flying down and catching decrees that Dutch was making. So I believe that that's what this represented in the dream. It was, it was proclamations and prophetic decrees that they were carrying. And when they rose up, I then heard that audible voice speak again. And I love this. It said, rapid eye movement. My seers are on the move. Ah. And as soon as those words were spoken, the eagles flew off in every direction. Ah. And it wasn't just random flight. They were sent on assignment and they went in the direction of their assignment. And as they left there, they were just drenched with that gushing water. And it was so amazing that as they would fly, the water never dried up off of them. But as they would fly, the water would rain down like a rain shower on dry ground wherever they flew. The water kept gushing out and I got soaked in that water. Thank the Lord. And I went inside the meeting house there. And if you've ever been in this little meeting house, there's nothing in there but little wooden benches and a pulpit up on a little platform up there. But this time when I went inside the meeting house, it was set up like what I knew in the dream, like a command center. And there were like seven drafting tables set up with architects at each one of these drafting tables. And the architects were drawing up blueprints on these tables. And people were coming in to the meeting house one after another. They were coming in soaked with that water. And they would eat, approach one of these architects. And the architect who was drawing up the blueprint would tear off the blueprint, roll it up, and give it to the person who had come in. And it's really hard to explain this part, but this was happening so quickly. And I was so amazed at how quickly the architects were drawing up the plans. They would draw up the plans, roll it up, hand it off to the person there. And this just happened over and over very quickly. And then I noticed all around the building there were these pipes all in every direction going out from the building. There were pipes in these walls. And when the person would receive this blueprint, the architect would point to one of those pipes and they would go and get in that pipe. And I knew in the dream they were being sent yeah. to a specific place to carry that blueprint where it was assigned to go. And in the dream, I thought, this is like sending email. And I thought that, and, and my mind went to like fiber optic cables. And it was like, it, this is exactly how it is when you send an email. And I knew as soon as they got in those pipes, immediately, wherever they were being sent, they were immediately there. And then that voice spoke again and said, rapid response teams and I looked up behind the wall uh, the pulpit there on the wall and there was a sign that said rapid response command center and then the dream shifted and somehow I knew 
in this dream that what I was seeing and witnessing at the Red River Meeting House in Russellville, Kentucky, I knew in the dream it was also happening at Cane Ridge, Kentucky, and it was also happening at Azusa Street in California. And I was lifted up, and I could then see that there was a line that had been drawn from Cane Ridge, Kentucky, down to the Red River Meeting House in Russellville, Kentucky. And going out from each one of those places, Cane Ridge and the Red River Meeting House, there was also a, a line going out from each one of them. And these lines, as I was lifted up, I could see that it was in the shape of the head of a spear. And from that line, uh, the line that was connecting the Red River and Cane Ridge, there was another line that went out to Wales, and it formed the shaft of the spear. It was a drawing that was depicting that all four of those places, Wales, Cane Ridge, Red River, and Azusa, they were all connected. And what I saw happening at Red River was simultaneously happening in all of those places. And I knew that I was being shown that the culmination of all those past moves of God were being brought together to spearhead, I heard that in my dream, to spearhead another greater and more powerful move of God. And I knew that God was saying there is a resurgence that is coming. And He is uncapping the wells. And it is going to gush forth not just what was, but what was and even greater is coming into our time. Thank you, Gina. Well done. You know, what I always like to do is take Revelation and see patterns with it in the Word of God. And then you know how to pray and you know how to what you're looking for when that word starts becoming manifest in the earth realm, because the word becomes flesh. The more that we embrace it, the more we uh, walk it. And, you know, when you're looking, as Dutch was mentioning out of the faith chapter, when God spoke, he spoke all the way into, into today. And it, he framed the world through the ages. And see, that's what makes us a prophetic people. This is why cessation theology is one of the very worst and most dangerous theologies because you quit framing today based upon the way God spoke. See, and that's our responsibility. Look at somebody, tell them that's why you're here. I mean, you were there before the foundation of the world. You've been around a long time, but the Lord set Gina in this particular time frame in the earth realm so that she could have a dream to help reframe what we're doing now and what he's doing now. So see, that's how prophetic revelation works.